Hello, welcome back to another video. This is your West Ham United nil, Everton nil fan cam. If you want to see an extended match reaction, come and join me live at 10 p.m., uh, which is what I usually do on this channel. I do live streams, if you don't know, on every match preview and every match reaction to do West Ham United. So if you want more than just a short video, come and join me at 10 p.m. If you are new here, please subscribe. We're trying to hit 1,000 as soon as possible, 1,000 subscribers, and we're nearly on 600. Um, as I predicted on my TikTok and in the match preview of this game, uh, it was a draw, but I was a fool to think that there were going to be goals in this game. Now, a draw pro probably is fair in the end, but for a dominant time of that game, Everton still looked like the better team. And that's really bad because Sean Dutch doesn't, Sean Dutch isn't the greatest manager in the world, keeps you afloat. Everton don't really invest that much. They had an okay transfer window, they haven't played. Jake O'Brien, but Ilamed and Di probably one of the better players on the pitch today. Um, the only one I was actually going to do anything for Everton, in my opinion, so in terms of crazy, we let a 38 year old Ashley Young just spam crosses in, uh, which was always going to be the game plan. If we didn't have Tadebo, we would have been at least 2 0 down by half time. Uh, Tadebo had to do a lot today. And outside of Tadebo and Somerville, there's nothing to write home about when it comes to the players that played today that started. I didn't think Juan Misaka was that bad, but I didn't think he was warranted taking off for Vladimir Sufa, of all people. Now, I'm assuming the logic into that was for crosses, but this manager, when he makes substitutions, is more of, of an erratic point of view than an actual logical point of view. The reason why I say that is because you make subs to be proactive, not reactive. And the problem is with this manager, he is reactive. Now, if he was proactive, he would have seen that first half and be like, OK, we need more control in the midfield. Put Soler, put Soler on for a lot sooner. The problem is when he put Soler on, it was a midfielder Soler, Suchek and Paqueta. None of them are number sixes. So if we came up against a better midfield today, we would have struggled with getting overrun. Soler did OK. He did OK. Came on. It was actually just refreshing to see someone that can pass the ball sideways. Uh, Mikel Antonio, that was one of the worst performances uh, that he's ever had in a West Ham shirt. But I've been saying this for a time, as uh, as much as he's done very well for the club uh, throughout his time here, and I really love him. Uh, but he's done. He's done. And it's as simple as that. He's just done. He can't, he can't control a ball. He never could, but it's actually getting worse at this point. You know, even times where he was getting outbarged by Tarkovsky, which I know Tarkovsky is strong. He's not as strong as Antonio. Uh and listen, cool, cool, you're coming up against Jared Brown for a very good centre-back as well, but we didn't really do anything to test Pickford until he came off and Danny Ings came on. Um, the problem is, as well, we've been playing the same formation for the past six or seven years. Well, throughout my life, we've been playing 4 2 3 one and it feels like all the players that have been here for a very long time are very used to playing how it was from last season, the 4 2 3 one I didn't think anyone was that good or that bad today, apart from Antonio was terrible. So I don't think anyone else offered anything. I thought I, I actually say saying that Suchet wasn't that good. Rodriguez completely immobile today, apart from one shot, wasn't that good either. Bowen was terrible. Some of it was really good, and it was refreshing to see someone with pace. But let's get onto the bigger picture, and that's the manager. The manager has now kept his job by just drawing that game. We know that this ownership isn't serious when it comes to being ruthless, and we know that this manager is going to keep his job by a draw because it's at least we didn't lose sort of mentality, which is why we are in the first place. Now, if we do keep this manager, we're going to lose to Newcastle and Arsenal anyway, but we're actually going to get comfortably battered and the confidence is going to be so far low for this team. It's kind of, kind of unbelievable. And we're going to find ourselves in a relegation battle. It could get worse from here. So if anyone is actually worried about getting relegated, be worried. Be worried because for as long as this manager's here, we could get relegated. We could. And the reason why I put the worst manager since Avram Grant is because it's even worse than the Pellegrini era. In fact, it's probably just as bad. But the reason why it's even worse is because we have a better squad. Uh, it's worse than Slavon Bilic era by far. It's worse than the David Moyes era by far. Everyone used to ask me about Moyes versus Lopetegui. I, at the start of the season, I could weigh up the positives and negatives of both. Ever since the Chelsea game, I, I'd probably say Moyes. Because at least we had a couple good seasons under him. Like... For the most part, it was it was still good under him. It just needed to change because it just went stale. And the problem isn't the boys, the sacking of David Moyes. The problem is the appointment of Yule and Lomotegi. I wanted to get behind the guy, but as soon, uh, after the Chelsea game, ever since then, everyone knows I've been the manager out for a very well, well since then for a month, nearly two. We're in November, and what we're 15th, 16th, or whatever it is, it is it, it's, it's taking a piss. It's taking a piss, and. Um, 
I'm not surprised. I'm not surprised. I didn't have any expectations for the start of the season, but I didn't think it would come to this. Uh, with the game in general, I didn't think we were going to score. I think some of them should score the goal that scored the one that went off the post. I do think um, Pickford made some really good saves from Danny Ings. Danny Ings came on and made an impact, a striker that was staying in the box. Um, but it's not enough. It's not enough. There's so much to get out of this squad, and the manager is not capable of getting anything out of it. And with the quality, with the quality that we have compared to the squad to do with the manager, two different trajectories. Two different trajectories. Um, and this is the thing you're kind of you're kind of seeing that Sullivan's still at the helm when it comes to hiring managers. If the manager is still here, and if we get Eden Terzic, nothing is going to be solved. Nothing. But that's it. That's it, really. And that's the six-minute fan cam. But if you want to see it longer, as I said, come and join me at 10 p.m. for the match reaction, people. Um, there was not really much to actually talk about when it comes to this game. But if you want, if you want to put in uh, your points of view, come and join the live chat on YouTube and Twitch at GVO Mics for the match reaction, people. Make sure to like the video. Make sure to subscribe if you are new. Social media are in the description. If you want to follow me in the email for the inquiries, one of the rest of 1K subscribers. I'll see you guys later. Goodbye.